Hello there, John with you, and today I'm unveiling for the final time the uh, Revel Zill 131 in 135th scale scheme or scale from, from uh, Revel. And this kit was uh, very kindly given to me by my good friend in Sweden, Peter. Peter's Plastic, check out his channel, he's got some lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. And uh, Peter sent me on this as a, as a little gift. And um, not being a truck person, I gave it a go. Okay, uh, don't expect super work lads because uh, there are there are noticeable mistakes, and I I'll show you as I as I get there. Um, but you know, overall, I'm 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 quite happy with the uh, with the um, with the outcome, shall we say? Despite the few. Um, little fuck-ups that John decided to, to do. So, without further ado, let's have a look at this. This is um, obviously not the uh, box that came in. This is a, a John Moore re-box of a, a Revel kit, which was a, a Revel a re-box re themselves of uh, an ICM kit. So, this uh, re-boxing thing is great. It just it came with the side opening boxes, which I don't like, and I put it into this type, which was, um, it was actually it was a Vegeta box, but, uh, Revel, you know, cop onto your shit and put them into decent thickin' boxes, will you, lad? Because people, you know, like to be able to keep the bits pieces together and the side opening boxes, it's practically impossible to do that. So, without any further ado, let's have a look at what John has done. And see how John fucked up this one, shall we say, isn't that what they say? So, there she is. Ta-da! <laughs> um... Like I said, it was. It's a lovely, lovely kit. If 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 it wasn't say uh, um, that really, um, it's a level five kit for uh, Revel, and I should have read the instructions a bit more carefully, especially in putting the cab together. Uh, there's supposed to be an over overhang here on the the roof of the cab to the windscreen and it overhangs the windscreen. I never really noticed that. When I fit it all, you know, fit the back and the front thing. And then later on you fit the doors. So when I went to fit the doors later on I realised that I had too big a gap for the doors. And the windscreen was in, you know, it, it should have been further back and this whole thing should have been just a little bit more um, closed up, if you get me. And, um, I, I, I kind of filled the holes it was the only thing I could do because I tried to get the top off and I'd have ended up breaking something or scratching the daylights out of something so I just left it um, tried to patch it up as much as I could The bonnet, I left the bonnet off because it shows a lovely engine in there um, I don't know if you can see that or not but there is a very very nice engine in there um, it's a lovely lovely little uh, build the, the engine itself and of course you know there's loads more detail in it as in the underside of the truck itself has um, lovely lovely uh, linkages springs um, exhausts all that kind of stuff that's underneath the truck in real in reality it's under the, the model truck as well but that's the only way you get to see it so when you do that you're not going to see it but it's there and I like it and it's nice and it was an experience and a half in building it I'll tell you that much if I built that kit again I would like to build it again and I do it properly but um, like I said the, the main the only real mistake I made was in the cab in, in the, the fitting of that cab which led on to a couple of other little bloody mistakes as well um, as in because that was done that way I had to do other things you know to line up with it but um overall overall um despite john's fuck up it's a lovely kit and even even with the alignment issues that i have you actually have to look kind of close to see where uh where the um where the where the where it went wrong in me shall we say or where i went wrong on it to be more precise john you know uh, there was nothing wrong with the kit it was all down to you so 
there we go it's um like i said it's an absolutely lovely 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 kit um it's a uh, lovely detail lovely um uh lovely to work with um and i'm just shall we say i'm I, i'm very very happy oh, see see what i mean about bloody the hard trucks they're a nightmare they really really are like fitting these things like you've got this whole big top and it's got to sit on two little rails and half those where that where they sit it's just it's not very solid you know and as you can see john made it even less solid i just have to re-glue that again but um it's not going to be touched so it's going to be put up on a shelf and left alone like that um, with the bonnet, I'm going to have it up with a little, um, you know, bonnet holder, whatever they call it. And the Simon came to come up with the idea of just a little bit of rubber, glue it in here and under here, keep that up, and you can put a, a bit of a wire or something just to keep the thing up so you can see the engine that's in it. Um, yeah, it, it's a lovely little idea, I think, as well. Um, the base is nothing spectacular. It's, the, uh, it's an old base. That I just reutilized just to show this. I was going to uh, reveal it on just the plain blue background, but uh, spotted this little base in the corner and said that would look absolutely fabulous in it. So there she is. So, Peter, thank you very, very much for that. I do appreciate it. Um, hopefully, I've, I, I, I've, I've done a job that, I mean, I'm happy with it. I really, really am. Like I said, even with the fit issues, because I know where it went wrong and I think I, uh, I think I kind of covered it up reasonably good. So, thank you very much. As I said, Peter, uh, I do appreciate it. Thank you very, very, very much. And uh, I hope you like what I'm after doing with your with your kit. Um. So, there we go. Anyway, lads, uh, we we'll leave it at that. It's just a quick reveal. Uh, nothing spectacular. Um. Don't forget. If to like and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel um, stay tuned for further updates on further projects I'll be starting a Dragon Panzer 3 this afternoon so uh, stay tuned for that For well not this afternoon, don't stay tuned this afternoon for because I won't be putting up a video for a couple of days on that and that'll be for the um, Say Cheese group build and I'm going to sort of use some figures that I already have and make arms onto a guy and scratch build a little camera that he's taking photographs of him. So I have a little plan in my head. We'll go ahead with that one. Um, but for this one, we'll call this one done. Stick it up on the shelf. And uh, it was it was definitely an experience, a learning curve. Again, like going on to doing planes, that's a learning curve because it's different, um, different techniques are used. Same in building a truck and building armor. The slightly different building things there's more glass involved and things like that and uh, I need to I need to kind of practice on that kind of stuff because I'm not good at that at all at all um, which is why I kind of stick to armor because it's easy to for me some people can't do armor do you know what I mean no matter what they do they can't seem to get the weathering right or whatever but for me it works um, and speaking of the weathering job on this one, I'm thrilled to bits with it. I like the way the uh, the colours are faded and and things. Um, it's faded really with uh, washes and uh, and things. What I did was I just base bit. I fin I I I I painted it dark green. The main the main truck, shall we say, bar the few little bits and pieces that had to be different colours, obviously. I didn't put on the orange bits and I give it a nice good pastel dirty wash which kind of left you know muds things in, in, in areas that you want them to get into and things like that um, scraped off 80% of it as you do with the sludge washes then give it a black uh, enamel wash then used some uh, Citadel products Agrax Earth Shade and Null and Oil which are, are quite good, they're very very good in uh, in you know, for grime and stuff like that um, 
give it a few pin washes here and there and highlighted some of the uh, metal with uh, a graphite pencil um, so you know there's there isn't that much done to it when you think of it that way when you say it like that but when you're actually doing it there is quite a lot um, and oh, a couple of dry brushes as well I'd like the uh, the the truck bed or whatever you call this piece back here that was all dry brushed with brown just to indicate that you know the, the paint had been the green paint had been scraped off the wood and things because they paint the wood green on, on army trucks and behind the wood behind the green is wood so as it gets aged and things brown starts kind of coming through this I do know because you know from being in the back and in and out of army trucks quite a lot <laughs> and uh, they do they, I mean they're they're used, abused, and God knows what else. Like these things had a an average life of about ten to fifteen years per truck. That's the kind of life they were getting out of these things. And with some abuse, they were brilliant. You you sort of bulletproof engines kind of thing. It's a big V eight uh, Russian engine, and they just went forever. Solidly built, went forever. Nothing fancy, nothing electronic, and this, that, and the other. So they were easy to fix and all that. And it's it's a good thing if it's not broke, don't fix it. They made them from 1960 right up until right up until the 90s, when the company eventually went bust. So they had, uh, you know, well, when I say 1960s, it was 1950s even or earlier um, that these things came into service first time, and they were made right up until the 90s. And there's still some going around today. We guarantee it. There's quite a lot of them around today. Um, and. The, the newer version that the, that the Russian army are using is basically an upgraded version of that. They finally upgraded it, and that was it. They hadn't upgraded it in about 40 years, and then suddenly we'll, we'll upgrade it a bit. But it's still basically the same thing anyway. It's a, just a heavy-duty cargo truck, and that's what you want. They're huge, absolutely huge. So anyway, that's, that's it from, from me. Uh, don't forget, like I said, to like and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, stick a like or a dislike, that's up to you. And uh, stay tuned for future uh, bills and bullshit from John. Okay, lads, I'll catch you up in the next one. Don't forget, go up and buy a kit, build it and enjoy making it. It's a hobby, it's something to do in your spare time. And people like me that have retired and due to medical reasons or just age, you know, we can't get around and do a lot more than what we want to do. So, you know, it's better than sitting down watching bloody crap on television. Pass a couple of hours making a nice little kit and uh, you've something to show at the end of it. And they're not expensive, lads. You know? So, go up and buy a kit and build it and enjoy it. That's it for me, lads. I'll catch you up in the next one, like I said. I'll stop rambling now. I have a tendency to ramble on a Thursday. Yeah, I do, actually. And yes, it was my birthday as well, so I, I'm kind of... Um, still kind of on a high shall we say so anyway guys, I'll catch you up in the next one uh, it'll probably be my bum on Monday <laughs> I have to change the chocolate because a lot of people give out about um, John having a banana in his bum and um, I promise I won't have a banana in my bum on Monday I will definitely go back to bum chocolate ok lads catch you up then stay tuned <laughs>